No. Hi, everyone. And welcome to another episode of the Cafe AI podcast. Uh, today, I'm super excited to have Andrea Mattoni, uh, Dev Advocacy Lead from uh, Flow Dapper Labs with us. Um, hey, everyone. Yeah. Super Great happy to be here. Phone, Andrea. Big fan of uh, Kappa. Um, by the way, is it is it Kappa or is it Kappa AI? Is it Kappa.ai? What's the best way to say it? That's a great question. Uh, to be honest, we haven't figured out ourselves completely yet, but we always end up saying Kappa. And it's a little shorter and snappier. <laughs> yeah, it's, nice. it's nice and snappy, yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. But Andrea, why don't we get started with uh, with a quick intro to uh, to, to Flow and, and, and kind of your background. I know you have um, an interesting story coming from Amazon, uh, spending time with Alexa before, and then all of a sudden ending up in, in the blockchain space. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I'll give you the TLDR since I don't want to bore people. <laughs> um, I was at Amazon for a long time, did a bit of everything, product management, vendor management, um, all the way from getting publishers to uh, move their physical books to, uh, to Kindle, uh, to leading features on Amazon, Alexa. Um, and then I went on to more on, more on the developer community side uh, with Alexa. So helping devs build Alexa skills, which are the apps that you build on on, on Alexa and, and, and back then, right. It was, uh, it was always a challenge to create conversational experiences that felt natural. I think right now there's going to be a resurgence and a, and a, uh, a, a rebirth of, of interesting conversational experiences. Thanks to, you know, all the work that, that everyone in the AI space is doing, including, uh, Kappa. And, uh, and then it's for the last year and a half or so, I, 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 I worked on flow and, um, the reason I moved was of course, a couple of years ago, you know, the, the web three space took the world by storm. I had, I was already dabbling in it. I had a couple side projects that uh, got me familiar with a lot of different protocols and two of the biggest projects that broke into the mainstream were crypto kitties back in 2017 yeah. and NBA top shot in 2020. Right. And, and when I realized that they were made by the same team and they were building flow and, you know, flow is, is, is an open decentralized blockchain now, but, uh, the fact that behind it all, and that the core of the architecture was this team that really was focusing on mainstream adoption and, and, and trying to break out of the crypto sphere, uh, I thought that was one of the most interesting uh, teams to help. Uh, and so that's how I ended up working on flow, uh, because flow is the chain that is, it is flow is a layer for, for those of you who don't know, but by, uh, by the way, I know this is a very, uh, you know, non web three audience. So uh, it's a layer one permissionless blockchain, uh, proof of stake. So very energy efficient, if not one of the most energy efficient uh, protocols out there. It takes less energy to mint an NFT than it is to do a Google search. Uh, it has, um, a very good onboarding experience with best in class wallets, of course, right? That's how, uh, hundreds of thousands of users got into, uh, into NFTs for the first time with NBA top shot. It has a brand new programming language called cadence, which was specifically designed for smart contracts. And uh, I know Kappa knows about Cadence very well, which we will get <laughs> into later. <laughs> but uh, the the cool thing about Cadence is it really is built front from the ground up with the learnings that the team had building CryptoKitties. They really hit a lot of roadblocks when developing complex interactions on chain, right? Uh, first of all, because Solidity doesn't uh, it, it has a lot it has a lot of potential foot guns, and um, and so cadence kind of gives those guardrails. It's also resource oriented, similar to move, uh, versus, uh, ledger based. So on Ethereum, most people don't know, but when you mint an NFT and you save it in your account, what you're actually doing is just adding an entry to the smart contract that this address has that right on flow. Yeah. When you mint an NFT, an object is created. That is a special object. It's called a resource that cannot be duplicated or lost in a transaction or the whole transaction will, will fail. And it is stored on your account. So you there, there's, there's this account model on flow, which um, is not only more, more intuitive, but it also has some cool features like um, 
like account abstraction since day one, where you can have mul multiple keys for an account. The, the keys can have different weights and I can go into a lot of detail, but I know yeah, you're I trying so. to just get the TLDR <laughs> and I'm already going way too much into detail. So I apologize for that. But uh, yeah. the, the, to, just to summarize, Flow was built to create mainstream experiences and, and, and that's what uh, we're all focusing on here. Like, how do we build something that will enable not the next 10,000 people, but the next million billion people to use experiences on Web3? I think I appreciate the overview, Andrea. And, and, and I think the founding story there is, is quite powerful, right? Because it is, it is the original team trying to build on the technology that was there at the time, right? And then running into a bunch of headaches and then yes. like solving problems to bring this tech to the real world, right? It's, yeah. it's a very familiar story. Um, but 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 a reason there is it one that works works quite well for a good reason. Um, maybe just just to stay in the lane for a little bit longer. I mean, you, you kind of alluded to like smoother onboarding processes. I see you guys have done some cool like walletless stuff recently as well. Yeah. But like today, what what are you know what are some of the reasons why folks like you know NBA, UFC, NFL, and so on like choose to keep working. Um, or start working collaborating with with flow what's the, 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 the blockchain of choice yeah i mean um i think success breeds success right uh, at the foundational level so uh, yeah. i think a lot of people saw what top shot was able to accomplish and realized hey that's possible thanks to flow so i want to build on flow too yeah um and but if we go one one layer deeper which is okay why why is that possible right uh, as as we already mentioned, the smooth onboarding. Um, so uh, we have wallets on Flow that people don't even realize that they're using a Web3 experience. Uh, back in the day when Topshot launched, there was no mention of NFT anywhere, right? It was a digital collectible and it could have been potentially on a, de on a centralized database, but it wasn't, right? It, it was on a decentralized uh, database so that everyone had full ownership of their assets that they bought. It was a lot easier to trade them in an authentic and you know um, officially um, provable way, and 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 so uh, the I think the onboarding experience played a big part. Cadence is also a big reason because you can start breaking the the mold of what a Web three experience is. I feel t I feel today we're a little constrained with what we think a web3 experience can be right oh it's it's and, and i'm not trying to devalue those projects but you know it's either going to be a token or a pfp project or something in the realm of DeFi. Uh, but i think that's just the beginning of the story right i think that's that's something that as a as a developer community we need to stretch those boundaries and we need to find new use cases and the best way to do that is to have tools that aren't getting in your way and, and, and flow, you know, you can have, uh, I, I, I co-created co a proof of attendance platform. Uh, I'm not saying this to boast. I'm just saying that I, I live this yeah. on my own skin. We had 4.5 million NFTs minted, right. And it didn't cost anyone anything, right. Because transaction fees are so low that, um, that wallets usually subsidize them. So you're effectively creating transactions. Uh, for users and, and users are transacting in a really, really seamless way. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I could go more into detail around the awesome developer tooling. I could go into detail more about why, why Cadence is awesome. Um, but um, I think I think that's the main reason. So it's yeah. really, it's really user friendly and mainstream friendly. It's scalable because differently to other chains, Flow has different types of nodes. And each mm -hmm. node is specialized in one part of the transaction process. So for example, we have the consensus nodes and we have the execution nodes, right? You can imagine by, by the name of them that they do different things. So the consensus nodes deal with, you know, uh, is this transaction going to go through or not? Whereas the execution nodes are like, okay, if this transaction does go through, uh, this is the work that needs to get done to execute the code, right? And you can imagine that the consensus nodes can be a lot slimmer and a lot more numerous around the world. Whereas the execution nodes, since they're not involved in the consensus directly, right? Um, they can be big beefy machines, even potentially data centers in the future, right? Huge whole data centers. And you're not compromising the decentralization because as long as you have enough of them that 
it's resilient to you know uh, geographical catastrophes uh the actual consensus process is spread across a lot more machines and and this allows it to scale because where it needs more computing power it can uh, double down vertically or horizontally actually and 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 vice versa no i appreciate appreciate the overview here as well um i think that's once again like it's always getting into these conversations that just makes me want to want to just go for a weekend and start like tinkering, right? Like, there's so many cool technical problems as part of. Uh, I part I, of I know this. a cool tool that that you can use to get started quickly uh, building. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, cool tinker. Um, it's called Kappa. I don't, know if, I don't know if you if you know it. No, no? It seems, it seems it's name, this really cool thing where you it it basically parses. All of the documentation, all of the code samples, everything, and and it it uses that to create you know a a fine tune of of a of what everyone's talking about, right? Which is a language model that you can interact with directly, and it's super focused on only the content that you care about. For example, on the flow uh, developer experience. So definitely check it out. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be sure later. to do that after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Hey, one one topic I, I would would love to get to here, Andrew, as well, just to switch gears a bit. Um, also, maybe to to sort of lift a, a little bit to, to the more general audience of this conversation. One thing I think a lot of people don't realize sort of outside in about the whole Web three ecosystem is that at its core, right? There, there's a lot of right, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of like hand wavy conversations, but at its core, it's really building a successful Web3 project. It's really about attracting some great developer or developer talent, right? Yeah. And, and creating a great developer ecosystem at, at its core. And I think there's so many lessons for maybe non Web3 projects to learn from just how to keep an engaged developer community. You know, I know you guys do a ton, both in terms of Discord, like hosting hackathons and so on. But but could you maybe speak a little bit to some, some maybe lessons learned both in your current role and possibly even in your previous role that that sort of you know the, the average sort of developer facing company should probably do to, to keep their, their community engaged and, and grow that? Yeah. Um sure. So I think uh it it needs to have two sides, right? One side is how do you get more developers to try out your awesome tech? The other side, which is arguably the most important one, is the ones that are trying your tech. How do you make sure that they're happy, that uh, they feel like they're being listened to, that if they have feature requests and are stretching the boundaries of your technology, how do you expand those boundaries around them, right? Because they're usually the pioneers who are even cr coming up with, uh, with use cases, ideas, and applications that you had no idea your tech could do, right? And, and so while it may be a little risky to listen to everyone, right? Cause not everyone, um, everyone has ideas, but not, not every idea may be worth sp spending time on. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you can find the real power users, the ones that are, um, especially stretching the boundaries of your technology in the direction that you think is the right one. Right. Um, and, and not trying to stray it away into something that it's not supposed to be. I think those are the most useful people to really uh, stick close to, engage frequently with, and and um, and and yeah, act on on their suggestions. Um, so I think just being a little bit more practical, right? I think on on this side of the of the equation, I think uh, things like focus groups or call them office hours, call them um you know round tables what whatever you want i think these types of these types of um intimate uh intimate events with people who all speak the same language in the sense that they're all at a certain level with your tech allows yeah. for a lot more interesting conversation and a lot more uh, thoughtful discussion around things that that could be expanded improved on uh but then of course you have a lot of potential diamonds across the whole developer ecosystem, right? Beyond your your tech. So it's really important to, okay, how do we get more people to find out, try out, um, in our case, flow, right? And and show them rather than tell them how awesome it is. And yeah. and so 
as long as your foundations are strong and you know that you have a great onboarding experience, you have uh, a great technology that once people find it, they will want to use it, right? Uh, the biggest challenge is how do we make them aware of it? So events like hackathons, event, uh, events like conferences, so actual events, um, are all great places to be, to, to kind of not only uh, spread awareness, but also to chat, see what people think of it, see first impressions, um, try to capture, uh, you know, if there's things that don't get through when you first tell someone about something, that's probably a sign that either you're not explaining it correctly, or maybe like you have to change, uh, how will you angle the thing? Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm being vague because I think these concepts apply to any piece of technology rather than just flow or Kappa. Right. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I think it's really a combination of, of a lot of different things that sum together, create a engaged community, but I would divide them, as I said, in like, how do you attract new devs and how do you nurture the devs that you do have? Keeping in mind that the devs that you do have can become your strongest advocates, right? So a lot yeah. of our existing devs are flow ambassadors. They, they go out, they, they do events, they organize workshops, uh, they contribute to the ecosystem in so many different ways. And, and, and so like, they're not only great developers and are building great stuff, but they're also helping you, um, get more devs to try out flow and, or your tech. So. Uh, I, th I would say that's the high level mental model. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if, if that, if that's enough detail or if you want to go in, into a bit more deep, uh, deep, deep detail, but I think overall that's how we approach it. No, I appreciate the overview. Right. And I think it's, it, it is definitely a case of many, many, you know, broad things add up to then what, what makes a, a, a thriving yeah. developer ecosystem. And I think exactly. if there is really, I, I would really just encourage any non web three companies to, to at least look over the fence a little bit and, and, and take some lessons because uh, a lot of cool stuff happening. Yeah. Um, I think and, uh, yeah. on that note, Andrea, as well, um, we normally try to keep these episodes around 15 minutes. So um, I suggest we round it off here. Any any closing notes, any um, shout outs, words of wisdom um, from your side to, to round off with here? Yeah, I think uh, for, for those of you who especially those of you who, you know, um, are curious about the web three space that are looking for somewhere to build that is trying to be more, uh, or, or, or you're trying to create something that's more than just a, you know, um, something that, that, that already exists, right? If you're trying to pioneer a new type of experience, I highly recommend you to try out flow, uh, and join our discord discord.gg slash flow uh we're there to help and stay tuned for potentially an upcoming hackathon uh which is going to be a big one and specifically focused on breaking the mold so uh so stay tuned for that and uh and i think one other shout out is uh we have recently been experimenting with kappa on our documentation portal uh i've tried it a bit so far and very impressed with it uh, I think while I do think the AI space is overhyped at the moment, rightfully so, but it is overhyped, uh, the way that, you know, so some, some people are, are, are saying AI is going to replace everything, and, but I think AI is just a really useful tool that if used correctly can just, um, basically become a superpower for everyone. Right. And, and I'm already seeing this on our documentation page, thanks to Kappa. So. Uh, super, super happy to, to be playing with it and having the opportunity to, to, to have a AI, uh, generated, uh, uh, well, to have an AI agent helping us, uh, teach devs about flow and, um, can't wait to see how, how, how it improves over time because it's already good. It can only get better. Awesome. I appreciate the, the kind words here at the end, Andrea, and we'll leave links to the flow discord and, and docs and so on in the in the description below as well. Thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Thanks, Emil. And uh, great. And th 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 thank you for having me, but also good luck with uh, with Kappa. And uh, uh, good, good luck to all the developers who are, are out there building. And good luck to all the developer companies attracting great developers to build on their uh, great tech. So <laughs> hopefully this podcast was 
was some use to you. Thank you all. Bye.